in that regard, I agree. Let's do biographies. Q, do you want to start? Sure. Uh, my name's Q. I from the area, but um, I don't even know where the area is at. So it doesn't matter. From North Alabama. I mean, just, just put it because I mean, this is going to be a worldwide podcast. So North Alabama is probably as general. Mr. Worldwide. Um, WWW. Yeah. But um, I, I started preaching when I was 15. Got into youth ministry when I was 19 and um, did youth ministry for about seven or eight years and then ended up planting a church, then planted three more churches and currently pastor, one of the pastors of the church originally planted. Um, married, got three daughters. Uh, I don't know what else you need to know. Play college football. I should share my areas of expertise. I played college football. Planted a lot of churches, done quite a bit of mission work. I've uh, been in jail. Um, those are probably the things that have taught me the most in life. So, <laughs> we so just for a weekend in jail. In, it was what well, great fun. In in in, in preparation for this, I told y'all to think about the most embarrassing story for you to share. Mm. So, would you prefer to do that or tell us about jail? Well, I mean, so when I was planting church number three in Eugene, Oregon. I also got a job with the Eugene Mission. I was the director of social services there. And just to be quite frank, it had been ran by the same folks for a long time, and there was just a lot of shadiness that was happening. Didn't know where you were going with that. <laughs> Sage right uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, a lot of shadiness that was happening inside the Eugene Mission. So we had to bring in drug dogs, broke up a bunch of drug trafficking rings, all kind of madness. FBI was working with us on stuff. But um, so then a lot of people got mad because their supply chains, money you became chains, enemy. been broken up. Yeah. I and mean, we revamped, did a whole recovery program. It was great. But um, in that process, a lot of death threats and then just, you know, other threats. And somebody made some claim that I had uh, ran them down with my car. I mean, there was no truth to it, but. Um, apparently you can just tell the police stuff. So they swore a warrant for your arrest? I did. How about that? And did you go peacefully? Well, so <laughs> I didn't even know that, that warrant existed till a year later. And um, my driving privileges got suspended. And I'm like, what's going on? So I called the police office on a Monday. And they say, you uh, didn't report an accident that happened. It's like, okay, haven't had an accident that happened, but... Look into that. And he goes, we can't tell you anything else. You have to talk to the reporting officer because it's still an open case. I go, okay. This is crazy. So I go, up, about I go up there crazy. to see the reporting officer on Wednesday. He's like, he's not here. So he calls me on Thursday afternoon and says, hey, just come up here Friday. I'll be here Friday. If I can teach you anything in this podcast. <laughs> let me that was not like Friday. a meet and greet, was it? No, if I can teach you anything, don't go to the police department on Friday. <laughs> go wait the weekend. Let them come get you if they need to. <laughs> if you're going to go to the police department. He set you up so hard. We go on a Monday. All right? So <laughs> anyway, I go on Friday. We walk through the whole thing. He tells me this whole story. I tell him the story of what went on that day, what happened. And uh, he goes, hey, I'm going to have to go talk to my superior officer. <laughs> so I was like, can I use my phone? He's like, yeah. So I call my wife. I'm like, hey, heads up. I'm, I think I'm going to jail. Like, I think this guy's. About to arrest me, just had a feeling. So he wasn't mean. I mean, he gave me two pair of handcuffs, which is nice. So I didn't. How, have to. how did she react? I mean, it was chaos at that point because what happens is then I get taken to jail. I get put in a holding cell for about five hours, like with these other people that many of them don't like me very much. Uh, I've been charged as a violent offender because I've been charged with two felonies, with a felony hit and run and felony assault with a deadly weapon. Um, I Jeez. get strip searched. The whole spread your spread your butt cheeks and cough. I mean the whole the whole prison experience <laughs> I got to have. Yeah. Um, get put in a cell on the floor where's the violent offender floor. Uh, so some rough characters in there. Yeah, but it's you're in. Well, I was in solitary lockup. Oh, that's awesome. Because so so mentally, did you like hold it together? Oh or? no, no. Okay, like I, I would like. I mean, like, I mean like, you start the thing about. So then, like, I went to bed. At, I don't know what time it is. I'm going, going to sleep on this little cot or trying to go to sleep, and it's like a metal bed. And they give you like a little pad you unroll and a, a pillow. Because you don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming. Somebody knocks on my door, slides in some breakfast. Like ten minutes later, get out your tray. You know, then like thirty minutes later, you want to go walk the yard? 
no. I'm like, <laughs> well, I didn't know. I was like, okay. So then I went out and started walking this yard, and people are like, hey, what you in here for? You know, the whole, like, it's like real life. <laughs> I'm like, oh, like man. you're living Shawshank. So then you're trying to be like, not like, oh, I don't know. You're trying to be like, <laughs> you don't want to get taken advantage of. I, I ran so, the man over. So you're like, you're like, ah. I some, would have just been a man. I don't know. Oh man, I'm trying to. Play. So it's like, man, there's some false charges that they're trying to put on me. You go, what are they put on? I told them what they're putting on me. They go, man, that's a, that's that's a minimum seven year sentence. And you're like, because they know. Oh yeah, they know. They and then know. you're trying to be like, like it just stresses you out. But um, all the while, you know that you did not run yeah. this fellow. Yeah. Then I go in the, after that and talk to the your bond. They set your bond in Oregon. You don't have like bail bonds, but you got to pay a ten percent of your bond. My bond was set for two hundred ten thousand dollars, which meant to get out of jail, I had to pay twenty one thousand dollars for my bond. <laughs> so you did not get out of jail. No, nah, there was no get, get out of jail free card for me. So then, anyway, I stayed there a whole weekend. Um, there's actually some cool things. I won't bore you with those things, but. Uh, Monday, my lawyer sees me. I go, it goes, Hey, you're going to get a rain today. Well, they never call me down for arraignment. My lawyer's like, That's really weird. I don't know what's going on. And then Monday night, about 9 30 or 10, somebody comes by and goes, Roll your stuff up. And they walk me out, let me out. I think they knew they kind of messed up. Mm. And mm-hmm. they were trying to, like, just get me Being out. Real there. nasty. Yeah, I had some lawyers that could have sued the city for. Some serious money, but I feel like God sent me to help that city. Last thing I want to do while I was leaving was, yeah. you know, sue the city. You know, yeah, so very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Jails uh, teaches you a lot. I imagine so. Yeah. 